Let us pray. Compassionate God, triune God of love, be our hope, be our refuge, be our protection. Amen. Well, our readings today have two things in common. The first is obvious. The second, maybe not so much. The obvious one is uh, murmuring in that old King James Version word or complaining. Out in the wilderness, when the buzz of leaving slavery behind in Egypt had gone, when it was just the day-to-day -day slog of walking God only knows where, when they got hungry, the people complained. They grumbled. They whinged. The whole congregation of the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. They said, if only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt when we sat by the pots of meat and ate our fill of bread. For you had brought us out into this wilderness to kill the whole assembly with hunger. They would rather have died as slaves with full bellies than as free people following God in a place where food is, well, scarce, where they have empty bellies. And I can identify with them, I think. Life looks so much better when there's good food on the table, doesn't it? So God provides. God provides manna, a day's bread for them to eat. And this is the second less obvious thing that the readings have in common. It's about daily bread. Jesus tells a parable about day workers in a vineyard. The owner of the vineyard contracts with some men to give a day's work in return for wages of one denarius, the basic coin uh, of the time. A denarius was a silver coin about the size of a five cent piece. It worth a bit more though because it was made out of silver so um, but then never mind it was enough to buy bread to put on the table for the family. A denarius would provide the daily bread for a family. It would mean that they ate that day instead of going hungry. The owner goes out to round up more workers at nine, 12, three, and surprisingly, five o'clock. He pays the last ones first and gives them each a denarius. The other workers are rubbing their hands and nudging one another in anticipation. How much will they get? Fair day's wage for a fair day's work, right? They are bitterly crestfallen when they look down at a single denarius in their hand. Everyone gets the same? How is that fair? So they grumble. The Israelites murmured, the workers complained to the boss about their wages. Com grumbling is something that threads a path through the scriptures. The prophet Jeremiah complained against God. O oh Lord, you have enticed me and I was enticed. You have overpowered me and you have prevailed. I have become a laughing stock all day long. Everyone mocks me. Everyone mocked Jeremiah for saying what God had given him to say. And my favorite Bible character, Jonah, also complains like mad. He tries to get out of going to Nineveh to proclaim God's judgment. 
Because he knew that if these enemies of God repented, God would forgive them. And Jonah didn't want that. And that's just what happens, though, in the little book of Jonah, 48 verses in all. The people of Nineveh repent. And this was very displeasing to Jonah. And he became angry. He prayed to the Lord and said, Oh Lord, is this not what I said while I was still in my own country? That is why I fled to Tarshish at the beginning. For I knew, for I knew that you are a gracious and merciful God, slow to anger, abounding in steadfast love, and relenting from punishment. And now, O oh Lord, please take my life from me, for it is better for me to die than to live. God's mercy appalled Jonah. God's people through the ages have been accomplished complainers. Are we any exception here at Albert Street? I have to say, I don't really know. I hardly know uh, the congregation very well at all. But, well, I, I'd, hazard, I'd hazard a guess that we are no different from any other group of God's people through the ages down to today. I'd love to find out that I'm wrong. At the moment, we're in an interestingly fraught process of finding out once more what it means to be a church in the city, now that we are separate from Wesley Central Mission. Things aren't the same now, and they will never be the same again. Some of us may have let a little complaint slip from our lips during this process. How might we stop the urge to complain? One way is to practice thankfulness, gratitude. The work we do for the church, for the gospel, for the kingdom, for Jesus, is a gift. The work we do is a gift. Not our gift to God, no. It's God's gift to us. A gift for which we should be thankful. God gives us a place in building a new creation, in creating shalom upon, among people. We are not working for God. God is working through us. That reframing can help us to work thankfully as partners with God in bringing light into a dark world. It's just wrong-headed to expect a reward for what we do. It is a gospel privilege to labor in God's vineyard. It's a privilege whether we have come to the work early or late. If we've come early, though, we may have a particular temptation. We may be tempted to look down on those who have come late to lend a hand. We may grumble when they have their say and complain when they haven't worked as hard or as much as we have. God stands waiting with a denarius in his hand for each of us. God has called each one to be a part of the work, even if that part is only something like asking a question at a meeting. There just may be a new insight to come out of that question. God provided manna in the wilderness. God provides today, God will provide for Albert Street Uniting Church. The Apostle Paul wrote to the Philippians in chapter 4, do not be anxious about anything, 
but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Reframing our innermost attitude in the direction of thankfulness and gratitude is central. Becoming people who habitually say thank you to God is central. It's been said, I think rightly, that thank you is the most basic prayer there is. So when we come before the Lord of the vineyard, if the Lord holds a denarius in his hand for us and we hear him say those blessed words, well done, good and faithful servant, we may have already practiced being thankful. 